I would argue that 2008, a year we think that's just about the subprime crisis, was more than that. 2008 was the year that both the market and Mother Nature got together and issued us a warning. You are growing in an unsustainable way, environmentally and economically. Turn back now. This is your warning heart attack. This was not just faulty accounting. There was also behind it a breakdown in values. The whole credit bubble was built on the twin principles of IBG and YBG. I'll be gone or you'll be gone when things go bad. We've been practicing the same IBG, YBG principles in nature which is why the World Wildlife Fund in 2008 Living Planet Report concluded that we are operating 25% above the planet's biological capacity to support life on Earth. No problem. I'll be gone. As WWF Director General observed, the world is currently struggling with the consequences of overvaluing its financial assets, but a more fundamental crisis looms ahead an ecological credit crunch caused by undervaluing the environmental assets that are the basis of all life and prosperity. But then what do we care? WBG will be gone. As business philosopher Dove Seidman put it, there are really, friends, just two kind of values in the world, sustainable values and situational values. Sustainable values say, I will always behave in a way that sustains, sustains relationships, sustains the, sustains the environment, or sustains the institution I am working for. Situational values say, I do whatever the situation allows. We have gone through a huge shift, a generational shift, from a generation that behaved by sustainable values to a generation that is behaving by situational values. And this really underlies the faulty accounting that we have been exhibiting in both the market and Mother Nature. And that brings us to 2009. If 2008 was our warning heart attack, how did we respond in 2009? Did we go on a diet, start exercising? Basically, we kept on smoking and gaining weight and started to actively ignore the doctor's advice. And the analogy here to smoking is not accidental. You'll recall in November 2009, the server at the Climate Research Center at the University of East Anglia was hacked on November 20. And all these emails were put out. Friends, we have to be, I have to be honest with you, that whole email thing, which was totally bogus, but it had a huge impact on the climate debate after 2009. A huge and pernicious impact. Because the, the, the message it gave out that somehow there was some crazy global conspiracy between climate science to hype the whole notion of climate change and global warming. That message was spread far and wide. And it came at a time of economic distress when it fell on way too many sympathetic ears. And it came at a time of weakness, at least in America, in the Obama administration, which fundamentally failed, fundamentally failed to speak out in favor of the science. The president's climate team, I'm sorry to say, there are endangered species I've seen more in the last two years than that climate team speaking out in defense of climate science and scientists. And Joe Rahm here, a wonderful climate blogger, I think got it right. The climate skeptics have taken a page right out of the tobacco industry's book. As Joe notes, when the whole smoking causes cancer issue came up, the tobacco industry figured out that it didn't have to win the debate. It just had to sow enough doubt to pollute what people thought. It was, I don't have to convince you that I'm right, I just have to convince you that the other guy may be wrong. The tobacco people wrote a famous memo that said, doubt is our product. 
it's a much easier threshold to meet. Doubt is the product of the climate skeptic community, and it's selling very, very well, I am sorry to report. And that brings us to 2010, when we really started to see, I think, the impact of that on policy. As you know, President Obama's party lost the by-election. They lost control of the House of Representatives. That ended the whole effort for a cap-and-trade bill. And as a result, where we are now today is that there will be no energy legislation, let alone clean energy legislation, at the earliest, barring some, uh, hopefully not, catastrophic event, at the earliest until 2013. We who believe in energy efficiency, protecting the environment, and trying to move the economy to a clean power system, we've had a couple of bad years here. And it seems to me we need to sit back and realize this environment, political economic environment, is not going to change, is not going to change overnight. And therefore, every one of us here has to think about how we bring more imagination, okay, more imagination to everything we do around this industry to work within these constraints. Now, it may seem like a fool's errand. It may seem unrealistic. But we have to understand these constraints are not going away. I wish I could tell you a price signal was coming. It's not. I wish I could tell you higher standards on a national level are coming. I doubt they will be. But here's why I remain an optimist. Because what I found in going around the country, talking about this issue to groups when Hot, Flat and Crowded came out, is that there is an amazing amount of innovation going on in this country, in Canada and America, from the ground up. And I see it here in this hall. I'm, I'm frankly, a, I'm amazed that you're all here. You just didn't get the word. God bless you, okay? You just didn't get the word that we're not going to have a price signal, that the politics is all paralyzed, that we're, you know, fighting with each other from one end of Washington, Pennsylvania Avenue to the other. You just didn't get the word. You are like a Marine we interviewed for our new book that used to be us when we asked him, why did you surge in Anbar province? He said we were too dumb to quit. Thank you all for being too dumb to quit, okay? Do not get the word, okay? Please don't get the word, because if you get the word, the word's kind of grim right now. I wish I could tell you that some quick solution from the national level is coming. It's not. We are where we are. We've got what we've got. It's on you. It's on me. It's on us. They're not going to solve it for us. So promise me you will keep on going and you will never get the word. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.